There's no reason why I'm doing this film, no reason whatsoever except for the fact that I wanted to watch this film. Honestly, that's the real reason. Now I've said that, let's grab a mega pint of rum and while I object to my own points, let's crack on with this week's video. I'm Berryman and this is 10 Things Wrong With. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl is a 2003 American fantasy film. The film tells the story of Jack Sparrow and Will Turner as they try and rescue the kidnapped Elizabeth Swamp from the cursed crew of the Black Pearl, captained by Captain Barbosa, who him and his crew become undead skeletons in the moonlight. When the film was released, it received generally positive reviews from the critics, especially with Johnny Depp's amazing performance. That being said, it doesn't make it a perfect film. Want to know what I mean? Well, here are 10 things wrong with Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Number 10, Ride. So technically, this film is based on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride that's in Disneyland. Strange enough, it was one of the last rides that Walt Disney himself actually had a hand in creating. However, this film doesn't really have that much to do with the ride. It has some of the same characters, but that's about it. Now, the reason being is when they were trying to come up with a story, it didn't really work on the big screen. However, there was a couple of other people making a completely different pirate film, and they thought it would work perfectly with Pirates of the Caribbean. So they sort of just merged them two together, and we got this amazing film. But the downside of that is, all this advertising saying based on the popular ride is actually not really correct because it's not really based on the ride at all. Number 9. Rank Norriton gets promoted from Captain to Commodore. Except that isn't going to happen. You can tell the Americans didn't really do their research. Now, maybe that's correct in the America, but in the British Navy, a Commodore is actually only a temporary rank. It's a temporary rank given by the Admiralty to a captain who is in charge of two or more ships for one particular assignment. Once that assignment's over, that Commodore goes back to being a captain of his own ship. A Commodore isn't really a real rank. The next proper rank after captain in the British Navy is Admiral. So yeah, he wouldn't have been Commodore Norrington, even though he did actually have two ships and he was more of a base governor rather than uh, a ship captain, he still would not have been Commodore. Number eight, pirate branding. Now, they've done a little bit of research for this point, but the research was wrong. So, the reason why Norrington knows that Captain Jack Sparrow is a pirate because he sees the pirate branding on his arm. Now, that is actually technically true that the East Indian Trading Company did use to brand it pirates with a P, except they didn't put it on their arms. They put it on their face. So you could see it at all times. So, yeah, although the branding's correct, the position of the branding is completely and utterly wrong. Number seven, beard. This has always bugged me about this film, ever since I first saw it when it first came out. Yes, I am that old, we've gone through that before. So in the first scene, Will Turner, he's near enough clean shaven with a very, very slight moustache and a little bit of goatee. And that's only in the first scene when he's in the, in the governor's house. After that, he has a full moustache and a full goatee. Where did that appear from? It literally just appeared like that. I mean, that's an obvious one. I mean, did no one else ever notice that or ever find it weird? Anyone? Number six, bed warmers. So as Elizabeth Swan gets into bed, one of her maids puts her bed warmer in. Same again, that's not how you use a bed warmer. There's quite a lot of facts, real world facts that this film got wrong. So a bed warmer is sort of technically correct how they use it. They put some warm embers, not red hot embers, that's a big issue, but they put some warm embers in that metal pot, then they put it in the bed before the people get into the bed. So when they get into the bed, they, the bed warmer comes out and you go into a nice toasty warm bed. Apart from the fact, why would you have that in the Caribbean? <laughs> but that's a, different, that's a different point. 
What they did was she was in the bed when they put the bed warmer out down by her feet. That would have burnt her feet to high heaven. Even old major bed really uncomfortable because you're trying to keep your feet away from this really hot thing in this really hot environment. One, you don't need the bed warmer and two, you're using it wrong. That's quite a big flaw really. Number five, drop it. So when Elizabeth Swan is on the Black Pearl, she's trying to negotiate with the pirates. And one of the things she does is hold the medallion over the edge of the ship, pretends to drop it and all the pirates go, <gasps> why did they do that? Why? Because you know they can go down into the uh, water to collect it. They can't die. In fact, you showed them doing this later on in this film. So why were they bothered? I mean, these pirates could have just laughed and said, go on then, jumped overboard and got it back themselves. <laughs> that didn't make sense at all. These are undead pirates scared of dying? What? Number four, quick dry. This doesn't happen once or twice. This happens quite a few times. Now, being in a film set on the ocean, these characters get wet quite a lot because they end up in the water. The other thing that happens quite a lot in this film is they get out of the water, they're wet for a second, and then they're dry about a minute later. I mean, I, I, I know I've already said that the Caribbean is nice, warm, and hot, but is it really that hot that your clothes dry that quickly? I mean, it happens when Jack and Elizabeth have got stranded on that island. Jack and Will go and raid the ship. They come out of the water and they're dry. <laughs> I mean, these characters, they dry so, so quickly. Number three, how does the curse work? Right, I know that sounds like a silly question, but hear me out. Because they do explain in the film quite detail how the curse works, because the original crew of the Black Pearl, they found the cursed treasure. And they weren't cursed immediately. They were cursed the more and more and more they spent the gold. When they realized they were cursed, that's when they started to try and find it all back. Now, Captain Jack was not cursed at all because they showed him in Moonlight, he was fine. So when he actually steals one coin but didn't spend it, he automatically turned, which sort of contradicts what happens early in this film. But also it happened again later when the monkey steals a coin, he turns straight away. So was it slow acting like they said when Barbosa was explaining it, or was it quick acting? Because obviously what you do is just steal one of the coins, go and do something that you know you're gonna die doing, bring the coin back. I mean, that's a brilliant plan to rob banks and everything, but um, it didn't quite tie up with how it was explained. Number two, apples. Gonna give you another two for one here. The apples in this film, they're Granny Smiths, which came over from Australia about 100, 150 years after this film set. They didn't have Granny Smith apples in the Caribbean. But that's not the main thing I was on about because these apples are pretty much magical. Really, seriously, right at the end of the film, just as Barbosa is shot, actually no, after he was shot, he puts both his hands on his chest to open up his coat, to look down and goes, I feel cold, falls back, and then an apple miraculously falls out of his hand that was holding his jacket. Magic apples. Might explain why they were in the Caribbean hundreds of years before they were actually brought over. Number one, stone chest. So all the Aztec gold is in a stone chest with a very, very heavy lid on it. Now, at the film's climax, all the coins are returned, and as they're leaving the cave, you see the stone chest with its lid on. No problems. It's all stored away, safe, done, dusted. Now, after the end credits, you see the post credit scene. You know, something that's quite modern nowadays. And it's nothing major. The monkey goes and actually steals one of the coins back. Now, here's the kicker. Who opened the chest? Seriously, it was closed. There's no way in hell that monkey opened that chest. Who opened the chest so the monkey could steal another coin? Or, and we might see this in a future sequel because we know they're still making these films, is there someone else who is still undead out there? Any theories? Because I would love to know your theories on that one. Let me know in the comments below. Final thoughts. 
let's face it, this film had so much struggle to get made. Disney didn't really want to make it because pirate films were not popular. Look at Cuthroat Island. That film flopped and that was a pirate film, so nobody really wanted to do this. Originally, Disney wanted to do this as a directed DVD, but they convinced them saying, no, let's actually make this a proper film. So they managed to get Johnny Depp on board. Then, halfway through, another live action Disney film flopped and Michael Eisner wanted to cancel this film there and then. So they brought him down to actually convince him, look, this is a good film. Loads of people hated, really hated Johnny Depp's drunken performance, so much so they wanted to cancel this film because of his performance, yet they prevailed. Now look at it, it reinvigorated the pirate genre, it was a smash brilliant film, and Johnny Depp's performance was highly praised. This goes to show that studios execs do not know what the market wants. And this film was proof of that. And that's why this film is great because the filmmakers did the film they wanted to make and it worked. It's a brilliant, fun film. You can sit back, enjoy it. It's an, a massive adventure film. Gr granted, the sword fights are not out of this world, but they're realistic. You actually believe they're proper pirates fighting in this and it's quite fun. And at the end of the day, that's all you want. You just want to sit down, enjoy yourself for a couple of hours and watch a good film. This film's perfect for that. But what is the cherry on the cake in this film is that awesome score. Let's face it, the score was amazing in this film. Everything from the set design to the acting was brilliant. Now, there are tons and tons of factual errors, which people like me do pick up. But other than that, it doesn't take away from this film. So what am I going to rank this film? I'm actually going to be quite nice and I'm actually going to give this, I'm going to give it another 8 out of 10 berries. That's my opinion anyway. What do you think? What did you think about this film? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Is my score fair? Would you score differently? Just let me know in the comments below. On to next week. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did the Spider-Man film and it's been brought to my attention that Although I've done that film, I've not done the Carnage film, which is very bad of me. Bad Berryman, bad, bad, bad Berryman. So let's do the Carnage film, or Venom, let there be Carnage, should I say. Wanna know what I find out, found wrong with that film? We'll come back next week and find out. Until then, take care, bye-bye.